honest review of Ocean Alfaro. This is a five-star resort in Putacana, Dominican Republic, and Teresa and I have been staying here for about a week now, so we thought we would give you guys an honest review of what we thought of this place, take you guys through a tour of this massive resort, and give you guys our opinion on whether or not we would come back here. So follow along as we give you all the ins and outs and everything you need to know before considering staying at this resort. <music> Once you come into the resort and you get off your bus, you're going to check in your bags with the bellboys and you're going to walk over into the check-in station over here, waiting that nice long vacation lineup for somebody to get to you. And then you get your orange wristband. Now on the other side of the building is the Albeso check-in, which is the adults only. I don't have too much of an opinion on this since we didn't do adults only check-in. We did notice they get a whole other side of the resort and there's not too many people over there. And it mostly seemed like a lot of older people, not really the younger people that, you know, if you're watching this video, watching me, you're in your 20s, 30s, maybe even early 40s. I think you're just gonna wanna stay on the normal side of the resort. the lobby is absolutely massively spacious so there's lots of room in here lots of chairs to be seated once you check in and you get your orange wristband you can now go to the all-inclusive bar which has this sweet I don't know whale bones above it or something like that and you can start getting your extremely I don't know double down triple down um, drinks they don't really have uh, proportions to a normal drink you ask for a drink and you're gonna get a double or triple like right away so it's a little hard on you for the first ones but if you like really strong drinks then it's gonna be right at home for you. Now they are going to tell you that you need to come back the second day after you come in because you usually check in in you know after 12 o'clock and they'll tell you you need to come back around 9, 10, 9 o'clock to come and talk to somebody named Aldo. At least that's who it was for us with Air Canada and he's going to be over in this section over here. So he'll be somewhere over there, but watch out. When you guys come up to the front and you're looking for um, Aldo, somebody in a white shirt is gonna try and come up to you and is gonna tell you, ah, it doesn't matter when you check in with that guy, he'll wait for you, doesn't matter, you're on vacation, come talk with me for a couple minutes. And they're gonna be wanting to give you like a timeshare. They're gonna talk about giving you a free gift. If anybody here in this hotel gives you a free gift or offers a free gift, just run away from them if you don't wanna deal with all that stuff. If you wanna enjoy your vacation, don't listen to anybody with a free gift, just walk away from them and continue on. Uh, you will find Aldo, he'll give you a check-in for your COVID sampling. Honestly, it wasn't a lot of information. You can see the lineup right here for your COVID check-in. You can book your appointment. You want to do that about four, no, you do it like your second day. They'll book it for about three days before the end of your trip. We got ours done on Sunday because we're flying out on Wednesday for the PCR test in Canada. If you're in a different region, it might be a little bit different. But basically, don't listen to that guy. Uh, go talk to Aldo. He's going to pull you to the side and try to sell you a bunch of um, a free gift and a presentation in 60 minutes, basically like a timeshare and stuff like that. So uh, we got a little bit suckered into it. We didn't actually have to do the presentation, but we definitely suckered into listening for like 20 minutes, a half an hour. And then we went, went to talk to Aldo. Yeah, so just, just don't listen to that guy. Uh, another thing, Aldo or whoever your uh, rep is, they're gonna try and sell you on the excursions. We actually don't recommend this. Before we met with him, we went over to the excursion person, which is over here in the corner besides the lobby check-in. So there'll be a guy sitting at this desk for your excursions. This is where we recommend booking them. There is a couple different sections where you can do it. So Aldo, our guy, seemed to be pretty ticked off when we, he started going through the excursions and we're like, oh yeah, we already booked them and stuff like that. Try to get us to cancel and do different ones that were cheaper and stuff like that. But we decided to stick with this guy and it was good that we decided to do that because when we had any questions about it, he's here the whole day, every day, the same guy you can deal with. The check-in person with the airline is there for an hour in the morning, every morning. So if you have any issues, you want to cancel or anything like that, you're basically screwed. Also, you'll notice around the whole rest of the resort that there's going to be other people selling excursions. Once again, I don't really recommend those people because it's hard to find them, hard to track them down if you need to do any cancellations or just have any more questions where this guy is just going to be there all the time, which is really convenient for you. 
I love the aesthetic of this place. There's a lot of books and, you know, a shark uh, fossil or, you know, anything, a stuffed shark or something like that. I love the whole appeal of this place. Lots of seatings. They usually do a lot of music at like 11 o'clock at night in here as well. Uh, bathrooms are over to the left-hand side here. And then to the right would be the doctor's office, 24 hours doctor. So if you need that, it's just across this glass section there. You can see the doors over there. Uh, if you need any of that for like emergency services or anything. And yeah, that's pretty much the lobby. So let's get into the main strip of this massive hotel. It's about a kilometer long from the lobby all the way down to the beach. I swear it takes you about 10 to 15 minutes just to walk to the beach in this place. The first strip that we're gonna go through is going to have you know the gift shop, you know, if you need any accessories, medicine or anything like that, as well as all the restaurants. And then at the middle of the resort is that's when you get to your hotel rooms. So when we checked in, we left our bags at the front and they gave us our hotel key and they basically said just go find your hotel uh, room. There wasn't actually too much support for that. So they could have been a little nicer if we had a bellboy who actually like dropped us off, showed us our hotel room, but we were kind of left to just go do it by ourselves. I'm not sure if that's because that's how they just normally operate or because they're a little short staffed now and they're just trying to do that the best that they can. So one thing I heard is that the resort is only up to 30% of staff capacity compared to normal. But as you can see here on the left, you're gonna have the tax and duty free shop. So lots of merchandise on the inside if you need to get your sunglasses or any snacks or you know any floaties or anything like that. I certainly love that everyone has like this pool uh, in between. So it's a cool, just not really for swimming in, but like a little pool, no fishies or anything. But you'll notice it trends along in the front of every single restaurant and shop along the strip here. Literally takes so long to get down there. So the first two restaurants here are gonna be Secura and Route 66. Secura has to be one of the all times best. Make sure you get a reservation for this one. It is the hardest one to get into. So what you need to do to get a reservation for this is get to the buffet at nine o'clock. That's when reservations open up for the day. And Secura isn't open every day for us. Maybe it will be when you come in, but it was kind of rotating through the day. So make sure you check which day it's open, when you can go, go to the buffet at nine o'clock and get your name down for a reservation because the only way you're getting into this place is a reservation. Every other restaurant, you can get on a wait list, you can go in. Secura operates under reservation only because it's like a huge cooking table where they're cooking in front of you. A little bit of sushi as the appetizers and then you got uh, chicken and beef and salmon and shrimp and it's overall, it's one of the funnest experiences that we had here. The next one is going to be Route 66. I'm gonna say I'm disappointed. We were massively hyped up for this one. The menu looked really good. I was like, man, there's lots of barbecue sauces. It's really good. We go in, I ordered the ribs. It comes out looking like pulled pork. I'm like, this, you guys made a mistake in the order. I'm like, nope, this is the ribs. I'm like, there's no bones. This doesn't make sense. This is literally a plate of pulled pork with three onion rings on the side. I, I couldn't understand it. And then when you get for your barbecue sauce, I figured, hey, that'd be the barbecue sauce they're cooking it. No, they just bring you a bottle of pretty much empty barbecue sauce of like which barbecue sauce that you wanted to add in cold barbecue sauce. So that was a little disappointing. I figured if you're choosing a different barbecue sauce, you'd be getting it cooked into it. Overall, we did not want to come back here. <laughs> we did it once and we're like, nope, that's it. We're never coming back here. It's absolutely the worst one. Route 66 is also going to have the snack bar late at night. So if you're doing that drinking all the way till 6 a.m., I think it's operating from 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. until three in the morning or six in the morning, four in the morning, something like that. Basically, it is the late night snack bar and you're gonna find there your burgers your french fries your hot dogs everything like that one thing i wish was they put salt on the french fries so make sure if you like ketchup or mayo it's the only thing that makes french fries edible <laughs> all right so the next up on the left you're gonna have the gym and the spa here uh, if you're somebody who likes working in the gym i'm just gonna give you some clips you can take a look at the gym i have no opinion on this because i did not go in there a single time this is going to be our first time even taking a look at the gym because exercise is not on our list when we're on vacation All right, so the spa on the other hand does have these seats at the front where these little fishies will like eat the dead skin off your fish. Pretty creepy to me, off your feet. Yeah, uh, the, dead, the fishies will eat the dead skin off your feet. Uh, a little creepy to me, so I never, I, I didn't try that. Uh, spa as well, we were gonna try it out, but the pricing was actually pretty expensive, so we just didn't feel like it was worth it for us, but plug up an image of what the pricing is so you guys are aware of it before you come here. Across the street here is gonna be the steakhouse 
and the Dolce Vita, which is basically the Italian restaurant. Now, Steakhouse, it seems like for us, has only been open on a Tuesday. This is a Tuesday that we're filming, so we're gonna experience it tonight. So I'll plug in some of the images that I get from the restaurant uh, later tonight. Now, the Italian restaurant, on the other hand, was also one of the best ones that we had being here. I ended up getting the steak, even though the night that we came here, we also went to the margarita one uh, earlier, so we weren't too full, but I ate the whole steak because it was just so delicious, and I was like a balloon at the end there. But uh, my girlfriend also loved it. She's Italian, and she thought the menu was very good, and we were hoping to go back to it last night, but unfortunately, it was it's not open every night of the week. So make sure you absolutely have to experience the Italian restaurant while you're here. All right, so the next stop is Mike's Coffee. It's basically like an espresso bar with a lot of snacks. Uh, I didn't don't know too much about the menu. We went in here one time and got a couple of little desserts, but we're not coffee drinkers, so we didn't experience any of the espressos. But if you love coffee, this is gonna be where you wanna be every morning to get a nice brew. Okay, so moving on to the other side, we now have the Margarita Restaurant and the Blue Moon. Margarita is basically the uh, Mexican restaurant. And I'd have to say, as far as the aesthetics on the inside, what the restaurants look like, the Margarita Restaurant was one of my favorite ones. Lots of cactuses everywhere. There's a little insole in the center that give you like the, uh, I don't know, just like an upper feeling with like a big statue there. So uh, 10 out of 10 as far as the aesthetics and the feel for the restaurant. The food itself, we had the, I think I ordered the quesadillas and it just came in like fajitas. Like it was chicken, it was beef on a sandwich with your tortillas that you put in. Not what we would consider quesadillas, but when you're in the Dominican Republic, I feel like some of the food translations get lost a little bit. Uh, Blue Moon, on the other hand, was a phenomenal restaurant. The menu is extraordinarily well. Uh, service and timing, because they're short staff, is a little bit more difficult. So we've been here two nights. Uh, the first night that we were here, went in around 7.30. We didn't end up eating until like nine. So you're literally waiting for an hour, an hour and a half, just to get your food uh, to your main course, which was a little frustrating. When we came here last night, we literally sat in there for a half an hour before anybody even took our order, which was extremely frustrating. We actually had to flag somebody down. There's like nobody knew what section we were in, which was really difficult. Uh, so I think that is mainly due to the short staffing that the issue that the resort is having. Overall, the food was phenomenal. Uh, if anything, I would say just a little bit of small portions. Could be a little bit of a bigger portion. It did make you want to go to the buffet after. Like, absolutely delicious food. There just wasn't enough of it. Um, yeah, it was a very good uh, restaurant, though. I definitely recommend it. You got to make sure with this one that you wear pants, shoes, and dress shirt. You have to dress up for this one. And margarita as well. And I believe also Secura, you also have to dress up. So some of the restaurants, the a la carte, they do have basically um, a dress code. This one over here is on the map. It shows it as a casino. I was pretty excited for the casino. Uh, it was one of the reasons that we booked this hotel. I was like, casino check mark, that's great. It's been closed the entire time. I don't know if it's gonna be permanently closed, renovations or whatever it is, but if you are coming to the resort near the time that I posted this video, casino is it's not available. Now, moving in, you kind of, that's it for the whole first row of buildings there. Now we're kind of moving into the second half of the resort. You go through this little archway and then you have a nice opening area. To the right here, you're gonna get the buffet, El Mercado. So your buffet, you're gonna get your breakfast, lunch, dinner, basically anytime you want food, it's almost always open. The little hut that's right here is gonna be the ice cream bar, which has pretty, really good actual ice cream. You'll also notice, Every night, right around this area, they always got like a little show going on or something. They'll usually have the projector down playing kind of like a concert or something with a lot of music playing. Uh, in the corner over here is probably one of my favorite sections, which is the bowling alley. So the bowling alley opens up at six. It's got like, I think six lanes in there. It is a lot of fun. So uh, when you want some, something to do, bowling is always a good option. So yeah, bowling alley over there is really fun. Uh, I won a couple games, Teresa won a game against me. Uh, definitely recommend the bowling, you can't go wrong. I did notice that there is a, a teen club here. No idea, I'm not a teen, I didn't go in there, I didn't attempt it or anything like that. And then you have your show area. So there's a nice theater in here, it has a show time. We're a little bit confused of whether the shows are on or off. Sometimes we saw the lights on, sometimes we saw them off. We actually only saw one magic show. I think there was a couple other shows. We just happened to be busy and missed them and it wasn't really on our itinerary to make sure we got in and saw them. Uh, then you got some couple washrooms here and then the next is the sports bar. So the sports bar, it's just got some TVs playing sports and stuff. I know Formula One was on, a lot of wrestling, a lot of football. 
On the inside, there's also like one pool table. I mean, there's a lot of chairs in there and only one pool table and that's it. So it's basically just drinks and a TV. And if you're lucky, you get to play some pool. I think they could definitely step it up and have like four or five pool tables in there, maybe some foosball, maybe a little bit more games. So only having one pool table for the whole resort makes it a pretty popular area. And usually you don't get to play a game of pool. I think we played like one the whole entire time we were here. All right, so that was basically a short second half part of the hotel there. If you're putting it into blocks, I'd call that like the second block. And now farther on, this is when the pools start and the hotel room starts. So the first night we're actually in the number six building, which is over to my uh, right here on the camera, your left, whatever. Uh, basically, we were in there the first night and it was pretty convenient. We were kind of like halfway in the middle. So if we wanted to go to the restaurants or we wanted to go to the pools, uh, having one of the closer buildings was very convenient. So take a look at the map for the hotel. Maybe you can request a certain room depending on where you want to be. You also notice a lot of hammocks around the whole resort. I found these uh, super cute, super awesome, great for pictures, great for just chilling, relaxing. You'll find a lot of them in the shade in certain areas and a lot of them in the sun. So you can either tan or be in the shade when you're relaxing on the hammock and then basically this main strip is going to go all the way down to the beach but there is a couple pools on the way so let's stop in and tell you about them All right, so this is what I would consider to be the main pool. You have the towel bar just over here. So if you need to get your blue towels for your lounging, uh, beach towels, basically, that's where you're gonna be getting them. I would consider this the main and the longest pool, basically kind of like three little bubbles started up over there where we were just were. Comes all the way down a couple cross bridges, uh, main section right here. And then at the very end, you have the pool bar. Now, unfortunately, due to COVID, it seems like uh, the pool bars themselves are actually closed. So in order to get a drink, you have to get up out of the pool, get into a line. If you ever see a line with like a three to four plus people in it, just know that you're going to be in that line for 15 to half an hour, basically just to get a drink. So if you're getting one drink, get seven drinks to drink them as long as possible. But also it's hot as hell, so your drinks are going to melt. So it's very difficult, a little bit annoying, the fact that you can't stay in the pool. And not only that, on top of it, they're going to request that you wear a mask every single time you go up to the pool bar, even though the workers will have their mask all the way down to their chin. As soon as they see you, they will put it up and then request that you put it on. We did notice that there is a little special treatment if you spoke Spanish with them. I have no idea what they were saying. All I noticed was a lot of Spanish people were never getting asked to put masks on and they were still getting their drinks anyway. And whenever I went up, I was told to put a mask on and I'm like, I'm dripping wet. I'm in my bathing suit. Where am I supposed to get a mask from? But they never and didn't serve you. So they still ended up serving you no matter what. But yeah, basically you have to get out of the pool and get into the line. And it seems like every bartender here is slow. Like back home, bartenders hustle and they get you drinks really fast. Here, they, they take their sweet time and like there could literally be a line of five people and that's like five minutes to serve each person, which is pretty frustrating. Uh, after the main pool, you come over and you have the kids pool here. Don't ask me too many questions about the kids pool because I didn't go in there. But if you have a kid, this is what your entertainment, the swimming area, all of the slides and everything, that's what it's going to look like. There's also a small little hut to the right where there's some bathrooms. So if you're in one of these pools, you want to know where the closest bathroom is, it's right there. So as we've been walking along, you still have the main walkway path that's been running beside this bush the whole time. I did feel that there's not enough cutouts in the bushes when you want to cross over. You can only cross over at certain points, which is a little bit annoying. And I found that in a couple other places where you want to walk in a direct straight line, but you got to curve around to follow the path. It just doesn't make sense. Now behind me, moving in, we have the snack bar. So kind of like the Route 66 midnight snack bar, this is the daytime snack bar. So if you don't want to go to all the way up to the restaurants for the buffet and you just want to get a quick snack, you have a snack bar here. You know, you're going to have your typical hamburger, hot dogs, nachos, french fries, little beef patties and everything like that. There's also a washroom attached to the snack bar. So if you need to go to the washroom, just run to your closest snack bar. And then apparently there's another snack bar on the Albeso side, which is the adult side of the resort. We'll get to that near the end of the video. Okay, so directly across from the snack bar, you're going to have the Lazy River. I would rate this 10 out of 10. We absolutely loved it. I think I've done like 30 to 50 laps in this pool so far during the vacation. I will recommend bring your own floaties. So when you come in here, there is some designated floaties that stay in the Lazy River, but I think there's like 10 in total, maybe even if that. So definitely recommend bringing your own floaties. If you didn't and you forgot, whatever, don't worry. The tax-free uh, shop at the front, it has some floaties for you. 
I think they do that because they know there's not enough floaties here. Now, I, I would rate this, this is absolutely amazing. It's a lot of fun. It connects on the far side, which we'll show you in a bit, that connects to the actual other pool bar that there is with a lounge area. Then when you come in, it's great. Although it's a little difficult bringing your drinks into the uh, Lazy River. I'd say for about 95%, you can get away. You're not worried about it. You could just kind of put your hand over for a little bit of spray. There's a couple waterfall sections where it's absolutely unavoidable. Your drink is gonna get soaked. So if you haven't noticed, this place is absolutely massive. We're only about, I don't know, 60% of the way to the beach. We got more resort places to the right and to the left with the swim up pools. So if you're getting any of the ones with the swim up pools, basically eight is gonna be the earliest one. So Lazy River is basically where the swim up pool suites start and they go all the way to the back. And as you can see, there is the light tower. There's an observation deck up there. So we'll take you up there in a few seconds. That's a beautiful space. Absolutely recommend you gotta check that out more hammocks on the side here in front of the pool and then another pool with another pool bar at the back once again the pool bar is not open and you got to get out and go up to the pool bar with uh, your face mask so the laver razor comes in and you can come and come into this cove which would be having the sweet awesome swim up pool bar but once again is closed so you have to get up go around and come to the outside of the pool bar this bar is not open all the time and it's basically hit or miss when it's open Tons more hammocks. There's lots of hammocks and nobody seems to really use the hammocks. So don't ever worry about getting hammock time because there's lots of opportunities. Starts to really open up here as well. So we're going to cover the Albesto side down on the left. But let's go take a look at what the beach looks like at the bottom. Looks like there's another towel bar here. Uh, but when we were here, this towel bar wasn't open. So you have to go all the way back to the other one just to get a towel. So part of this is also going to be the privilege restaurant on the second floor. We did not get the privilege pass. We didn't think it was worth it. $35 per day, US per person over a seven day trip. That basically just adds a ton to your cost. So we just did not find privilege was worth it for us. But in order to get up to the viewpoint, you want to come in here and there's a cool little elevator that takes you right up to the third floor. All right, so this is definitely my favorite place of the whole resort. Absolute beautiful view up here. Check it out. So on the right here, you can see a glimpse of another pool. That's the Albesso adults only side. As you can see, literally this resort is huge. You can just see the lobby up at the front, a water park, all the other hotel bays. Let's take a wander to the left here and check out the beach views. There's also another restaurant down here as well. This is a privileged restaurant, so uh, we don't have any review on that. Uh, beautiful beach, the white, what do you call those? White huts, whatever they are, cabanas or anything like that. It was also the privilege section as well. So we're not going to get a review on those. Pool bar there and just a beautiful view of the beach and the ocean. I love the view from up here. This restaurant down here is Albesto only, so adults. And yeah, other side of the beach. Okay, then I also found when you go to the beach and you need to go to the washroom, the closest washroom is right beside that elevator door. But the weird thing is, is it's only for the men's. And if you're a woman and you need to go to the washroom, I think the closest one is you have to go all the way back up to that snack bar, which doesn't make much sense at all. So I don't know if there's another women's washroom that we just haven't been able to find. There's another section here with kind of like a pool for your feet, but it's also a privileged section only. We, also another thing, we didn't find the resort was busy enough to warrant getting privileged. So it wasn't like when you're trying to go to restaurants or anything, you're like you just can't get in, you can't eat, where it warrants like getting the privilege. I'll be honest, I don't like the fact that the restaurant, the resort even has a privilege option. Uh, you spend so much money to come here anyway, and it's now they try to grab more of your money. And then yeah, this is the beach. So let's go take a look at the beach and what the uh, very close edge of the ocean beach looks like. You have lots of huts on the left and the right that are not privileged, just the normal huts. You can, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have any difficulty finding a hut the whole time that we were here. And you have the palm, two palm trees, which is great for the photos. Oh, they're a little tall, so you gotta get that camera angle tilted.
All right, here's what the ocean looks like. Hopefully there's not too much mic noise with the wind. Basically we found along the beach, there is quite a bit of seed weed. I think they do drive the truck or something across uh, quite often to get rid of the seaweed, but there's just so much coming in from the sea that it's very hard to stay up to date with it all. The waves themselves as well, the first like 20 feet of the ocean, the whole wave is like the sand water. You can literally see it's brown here. So when you're going in with your bathing suit, you come out, you're literally filled with sand just because of how much sand is getting tilted up in the ocean water because of how strong the waves are here. We are in November, so it is the end of their hurricane season. So maybe that's why a lot of the seaweed is being brought up. But nonetheless, you know, the water is still nice. It's just a little bit sandy at the beginning. You just gotta get past that part and get into the nice water, nice and warm. I did notice on the left side of the beach, which is still technically the resort, there's like concrete and rocks and it looks like they need to update the beach over there. You just want to avoid that whole far left side of the beach. And then on the right side of the beach, it's pretty nice all the way down. Yeah, definitely recommend water shoes if you don't like stuff touching your feet. We got them and I absolutely loved it because there's a lot of seaweed, a lot of rocks, a lot of drop off. Like it's not pure sand, you get out a little bit and then there's a little bit of rocky areas. So water shoes will definitely make you feel a lot comfortable, a lot more comfortable in the water. So off to the very far end of the beach, they do have the beach volleyball set up. It was a little disappointing for me. I absolutely love beach volleyball, but it's kind of off to the side. And they didn't even have the volleyball there all the time. It's only at certain times of the day. Now there is another net in the very center of the beach, right here with no net, which would be prime for volleyball. More people would play, it's in the center, just leave the volleyball there all the time. Why is the volleyball not set up in the very center of the resort where everybody comes down? Why is it tucked away off to the side where almost nobody wants to play? All right, so here's the main uh, bar for the beach. I'm very thirsty, I'd love to get some water right now, but I see five, six, seven people in line there. I know I'm gonna be waiting for 20 to 30 minutes just to get to the front of the line and get a drink. The service, I don't know if it's their understaffed because you'll still see three people behind the bar, but it takes five minutes per person to serve, which is very frustrating when you just wanna go get a drink. Another thing I noticed is the beach could be a lot cleaner. They could literally use somebody to go around and pick up a lot of garbage, a lot of the little tiny garbage specks that I think just because they're understaffed, they don't have somebody doing that. So the beach could be a lot cleaner I mean, you'd expect it to be a lot cleaner than it really was. Now we're gonna take you over to the Albesso or the adult side of the resort only, show you the extra pools. That was where we did get to experience the foam party, which was a lot of fun. And then we'll take you back to our swim up pool hotel room and show you what the room is like. An adults only experience exclusive for adults of all. We didn't, uh, we don't, we're not on the Albesso side, but that's not stopping us from walking over here. And then also didn't stop us from getting invited to the foam party that was happening. Looks like there's some nice villas that are just stationed right by the beach. So if you want to get a beach view. So you basically have another stretch here of the building surrounding the pools in the center. And there's a lot of lounging and chill time. And basically these pools look exactly like all the other pools on the other side of the resort. If you are on this side of the resort, you are hella far from all the a la carte's. And basically you have the one restaurant down by the beach that's meant for adults only, which does breakfast and lunch. But anytime you're going to dinner, unless you're privileged, you are walking pretty far to get to all the a la carte's or the buffet. This was the pool where they had the foam party. Uh, I think that was on a Thursday when we had the foam party. And then you have the bar again, once again, no swim up bar. We had to come out, have to wear a mask in order to get a drink. Looks like on the adults only side, they get another snack bar as well. It's basically a duplicate on the normal side, just double down over here and they only book in the adults on this side of the resort. All right, so now we're at the second part of the pool on the adults only and you can see this bar isn't even open. So if you were, you know, have one of the units that are farther up, you gotta go all the way down to that bar just to get a drink. Once again, another towel booth section that due to COVID, you know, uh, everything restrictions, it's not open. So if you're on this side and you need to get a towel, you're going all the way over to the main section to do so. Oh, this is cool. It's actually like a lounging pool area where there's like seats along the whole outer edge. So you can just sit in the pool. That's kind of cool actually. So if you haven't got the idea of it yet, this resort is absolutely massive. We've been walking around for like an hour and a half now making this video. It's been 
it's been quite a while. Uh, the only part I haven't really touched on is behind me. You can see the tennis courts. They're basically massive. I haven't been over there at all. I'm not gonna get too much footage over. This is basically as close as we're getting to them. That's pretty much it for the whole hotel itself. I'm gonna bring you guys back to our room with our swim up suite and you guys can take a look at the exact hotel room and what it looks like. All right, let me give you guys a in-suite tour of our swim up hotel room. Nice hallway when you first enter. Let's just check out the center view. Nice, spacious, king size bed, couch, table, beautiful view of the swim up pool. Before we go too far out that way, I'm gonna bring you guys back to the front and let's touch on the bathroom. Bathroom is beautiful, double sink for his and hers. Each curtains or doors for the toilet is on the left. Toilet is a pole. Nice clean, you know, yeah, nice scene, can't go wrong in there. And then a push for the shower. Walk-in shower is absolutely spacious, enough room for two people. And I love the top shower head, allows all the water to come down and just soaks everybody. You also get an extension here for cleaning certain areas, as well as two little cove, you know, inlets here for all of your showers, scrub buds, anything like that. They give you, you know, of course, your typical hotel, all of your shower gels, shower caps, even give you shaving kits as well as a comb and a dental kit for a toothbrush, which is pretty cool. And then they have a jacuzzi, which is pretty sweet, even though we've never used it, but you know, some people love to have the jacuzzi bathtub, so that's pretty awesome. Bathroom is pretty spacious. You have uh, another closet here for just hanging up your clothes. And then this closet on the left is going to give you a couple extra drawers. It's like the coffee maker, water. You're also gonna get your safe and the fridge. They have been stocking up the fridge every day, which is nice. Lots of water, Presidente beer. First day we came in, it was Coors Light beer. And then they also gave us uh, some little alcohol bottles as well. On the side, uh, lots of plugins beside every bed for all of your charging ports, as well as direct USB. So you don't always need your converter. Lots of storage spaces, big TV as well, even though you know we've never even turned this TV on the whole time we've been here. Uh, this king side bed is absolutely massive. I don't like giant pillows and everything like that. It's like almost too big. It's like the, we didn't even use the whole bed. Uh, you have the nice couch, a little table, and then also like a little workstation table on this side as well. So if you're you know, always a business person, you got to get some work done. Nice little section here. But the absolute best thing about this suite is the fact that it has the swim up pool. Come check this out. Oh, it's so hot out absolute swim up connected with a lot of the other suites as well so you can get to meet some people while you're in the pool i don't want to go in it because i have my shoes on but Teresa doesn't have it so she can walk into the water and give you guys a better view so as you can see the pool is connected to the other suites we're right in front of the lazy river here the water is so blue the water is warm you can meet some friends along your neighbors on either side and then besides the swim-up pool, you also get kind of a little hanging chair here to lounge around in and some other uh, little coffee tables out here. And of course, we got our floaties ready to go into the water. So we're ready to have a fun day. But yeah, this is what the in-suite uh, swim-up pool looks like. I absolutely loved it. That's pretty much everything we have on our video tour of Ocean Alfaro and our honest review. We hope you guys appreciate it. Made it all the way to the end. Please smash that like button. Help us out. Subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get a lot more travel videos out for you guys. So if you're interested in this hotel, also check out our other videos for more different reviews about different things, different, uh, more in-depth reviews of the restaurants and everything like that. Anyway, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.